recently a company called Aleph Aeronautics, mm -hmm. right, received limited FAA approval for an EV toll car. So EV toll is a uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it is. Okay, so an EV toll car. You can now pre-order a flying car for three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> a flying car uh, with a down payment of just one hundred and fifty dollars. Again, just paint the picture of the current and future landscape of EV tolls in general. Flying cars, drones, planes, and things like that. There is like different people in the industry right now that have very different visions of where this is going. I've, I've met uh, quite a few founders of flying car companies. There's actually another startup uh, at JJ Pickle Research Campus, which is currently where our um, office is. As, at, in, as in UT? As in UT, uh, JJ Pickle Research Campus, yeah. We actually do a lot of testing in the soccer field uh, with another uh, startup company that they have a flying car and they're called Lyft Aircraft. In wow. Hexa. So in a sense, like, um, like one of the reasons why I really think that drones are important, especially drones as a first responder and even drone delivery, is it's almost like the first step to get flying cars into the market. Uh -huh. And this is my outlook, how I, I think it's going to happen. But I really think that they're going to develop these air traffic systems that are going to manage whether Google or Amazon can deliver that package or that burrito from Chipotle or whatnot to your front door. Mm -hmm. And that air traffic management system is going to be the blueprint for eventually what will be like a flying car network system that you can leave your house and get in your vehicle and be on the other side of town in like five minutes. But I really think that it needs to happen in stages. Flying car technology is really disruptive. It's a paradigm change. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about it, humans, we've been traveling in two dimensions for for like nearly all of civilization. First you're walking, then you're on a horse, then you're on a buggy, then you're on an automobile, but nonetheless you're still traveling in an XY plane. And the whole flying car thing like adds that third dimension. So mm -hmm. you can actually like fly over traffic, you can, you know, do all these different things. Um, but for it to work, uh, like I said, it's baby steps, um, just because it's, they need to plan how to do it safely. Um, you can't necessarily have like a bad actor that's flying a car that may crash into a building or something. So it's very likely going to be very autonomous. Um, I really don't believe uh, people who have flying cars will be able to actually fly them inside of like in an urban environment. Maybe like in a rural area, they'll be able to mm. give that control to you. But but yeah, no, like multiple companies around the world are trying to do the different models. I'm a big believer that there has to be a driving component to this technology as well. So some flying car concepts are just EV tolls. And what that means, like you said, electric vertical takeoff and landing, they're like um, electric helicopters, but they can't necessarily drive you down the street. Mm -hmm. There are companies out there that are developing hybrid vehicles that have the ability to drive and fly. And I really feel like those are going to be the ones that are going to be the real winners in this marketplace because if you're trying to get to a consumer, like build the people's flying car, like mm -hmm. the Ford Model T was the people's automobile like 100 years ago, there really has to be that transition where people still have the ability to drive their car maybe down the street. But if you really need to travel far and you want to beat traffic, then you can turn it into like, you know, it's flying mode mm -hmm. and you can make it to the other side of town. Things like regulatory environment, like, you know, rules and laws and all these things need to be worked out. But I genuinely believe by the year 2040, maybe the latest 2045, you'll see flying cars in the skies over America. Like, I think it's going to be one of those things we see in our lifetime for sure. The one thing I'm thinking about right now is there are some countries and some states within the U.S. that are pushing for all electric cars by a certain time, right? Yeah. In the early days, it used to be you know, a lot of skepticism about electric cars and people were like, no, this is never going to take off. It's never going to take off. Right. So no one is gonna, ever going to drive an electric car or only a few people are going to drive it. But now they are taking over. Mm -hmm. That brings me to a point where you say you said something about they might only be allowed in remote areas. Yeah. But if we get to a point where EV tolls become, you know, become so good and so widely adopted, are we going to see government regulations in some cities, some states, some countries where they're like, okay, now if you're not driving a three-dimensional car, yeah. then you got to get out or something like that? Do you think so? There's definitely going to be an inflection point for sure. I mean, there was a day probably maybe, I don't know, anywhere between 50 to 100 years ago where the last person who had a horse that was like riding their horse into town was sold hey, you can't ride that horse anymore. Yeah, we live exactly. in the age of the automobile now. The horse is a previous age. 
there will be a point when the market adoption passes 51% and more than half of America has a flying car like you know that they used to commute to work and I think that's when that that's going to happen where eventually there'll be a regulation that say if you're powering you know your petro car from the 1990s or whenever like Mm -hmm. um or even your electric car that doesn't have the ability to fly it's like (laughs) hey it's time to move to like they'll probably do like a thing where they'll give a certain date like they did with digital television where like Mm -hmm. we're moving from this platform to this platform you have till this day to jump but technological progress like you know technology is always evolving civilization is always growing things are always changing um, one thing that we know for sure is things aren't going to stay the same. They're going to change in the future. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in change being driven by the need to solve a problem. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's why we develop as, as engineers. That's why we develop technologies. Right. Absolutely. It's to solve a certain problem, satisfy a certain need. So we have increased population, right? Increase in population or, you know, increased density in our cities. Mm-hmm. Then I can see a situation in which this becomes very very well and just like electric cars right when 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 tesla first started they used the cars used to be really expensive Mm -hmm. right so if you have people who uh can afford three-dimensional cars and want to just get over traffic get somewhere faster and they all decide to adopt the technology Mm -hmm. then it would just i i'm i'm almost seeing this like the way electric cars like uh, uh like the trend with electric cars i'm almost seeing that with this in in the future you know mm-hmm. especially since many of the companies uh developing uh the concept of flying cars are actually starting from where cars are so yeah. electric cars and it, it, the flying cars are electric powered right yeah, yeah most of them or mm-hmm. maybe even all of them i don't know i don't know anyone that is not electric powered right now yeah. and they're starting from that base and they're like this is the next level yeah right so It'll be very interesting to see.